Morning, guys. Uh, good to see everyone out. Um, turn your Bibles this morning to Luke chapter 24, and we'll be looking at verses 36 through 44. Luke chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. And uh, as far as just some announcements goes, we're going to be... Uh, We'll have some posts up about some of our announcements here in a little while after the services go, about some events that we got coming up. Um, but just want to thank everybody for their, their giving and, and their prayers. Uh, Miss Chloe didn't get to come home. Uh, so let's keep on praying for each other and uh, as we're going through this uh, pandemic that we have going on. Uh, but today we're going to be looking at uh, indisputable resurrection proof. And so as we look at Luke chapter 24, verse 36 through 44, it says, And as uh, they thus spake, Jesus himself, himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrightened and supposed that, he, uh, that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? And why do uh, thoughts arise in your hearts. Behold my hands and my feet, uh, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for this a spirit hath not flesh and blood and bones, as ye see uh, me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while uh, they yet believed not for joy and wonder, uh, he want he said unto them. Uh, have ye any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and a an honeycomb. And he took it, and he did eat before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was uh, yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms uh, concerning me. So as we see here, Jesus <clears throat> is... Um, giving his disciples proof. Uh, he gave them some, uh, some indisputable proof that he had physically risen from the grave. And there is importance of him physically rising from the grave. That it was so important for them to know that Jesus was, they were not just seeing a spirit. They were not seeing uh, his ghost. They were seeing him in his flesh physically uh, bodily resurrected in his body uh, not just like I say not just a spirit he had to rise from the grave it was so important for the for them to understand that and so important for us to understand because if Jesus did not physically rise from the grave then there is no salvation there is no payment for us and and our salvation and our hope is still in the grave with him and so the guys here, they're, they're worship, they, they've, they've been following Jesus. And yet, even though that Jesus is risen from the grave, they've gone down to the tomb. We know that uh, Peter and John, they went down to the tomb and they found that the tomb was empty. And, and the ladies, they come to the disciples and they said, we have seen him, we, we, uh, he's risen from the grave. They still did not believe. And so as Jesus comes to them and appears to them, he gives them, uh, basically he gives them three uh, indisputable proofs of, that he is physically uh, risen from the grave, that he is, that the resurrection has taken place. And as we see these things, he brings out, the first thing that we find is that he gave them physical proof. As you see here, as it talks about it the, in the verse first part of verse 36 and, and 37, 38, you find out that they were they thought he was a spirit. They thought that he was a ghost. They thought that uh, he was everything except for the flesh and blood. And he says to them in verse 39, Behold my hands and my feet. And he, he also finishes up verse 39. He says, For a spirit does not have flesh and bones. So as Jesus reveals to them the proof that he is risen from the grave, he, he shows them that the first two things that he shows them is his hands and his feet. And you can think about it, and other gospels brings out that it was Thomas who doubted. And Thomas says, I won't believe until I see his 
hands and still I see his feet. But all of the disciples, as, as Luke is writing here, he is writing uh, to give a man that, um, that Theophilus, if you go back to the beginning of Luke, he is writing to Theophilus, who is a man who is um, either, he is either interested in Jesus and he's, and, and, uh, he's doing some research upon Jesus in order to, to, to know for a fact whether or not Jesus is true or not. And so what Luke is doing is writing to him in this account. He is giving him evidence so that he can have confidence in Jesus Christ. And the, one of the things that you'll learn as you study the book of Luke is Luke is also a person, uh, he is like Theophilus, that he has never seen Jesus. There's no evidence in the, what, what well, even as you read the book of Luke, Luke is saying, I have researched the people that have been eyewitnesses of Jesus. There were people that were writing about Jesus in the in the first century there. There were many people writing about what they saw, what they experienced with Jesus. And Luke has read um, those accounts. He has studied those accounts. He has put them together. He has figured out what's going on. And he has put his faith in Jesus based upon the eyewitness accounts of these other guys. So as he's writing here, Luke is in bringing some information, some proof uh, that he has received from the first-hand witnesses, from these guys who actually saw Jesus, and he's passing it on to Theophilus. And so as we see here with Theophilus, uh, he's telling him, Jesus came forward and he told his disciples, look and see, see my hands, see the marks in my hands, see my feet, see how that the, the marks are there. And, and he brings to them and he shows them touch him, and, and he talks about that they... Uh, he showed him his hands and his feet, and while they believed not, as we go and we see here, they touched him. And you can go back and you find the other Gospels where, where Thomas actually touched his hands. And that he saw, he put his hands in the, in the nail prints and the nail holes uh, of Jesus' hands. And so what Jesus does here for them, he starts out with, see, there's some physical proof. I'm not just... I'm not in your dreams. I'm not in your imagination. I'm here. Touch, see, look, and investigate me. Jesus was calling for his disciples to investigate his body, investigate his resurrection, know that it's true. And so important for these guys to see this, to touch him, to see him, because these are the guys that are going to be telling the rest of the world that he is risen. So therefore, they have doubts in their life that Jesus is resurrected. As you can also see as it goes on, and he said when he spoke thus to them, he showed them his hands in verse 41, he says, And while they yet believed not for joy and wonder, he said unto them, Have you have any meat? So if that's not enough, you've, you've touched me, you've seen my hands, you know that a spirit does not have flesh and blood. Uh, he does not have flesh and bones. You can't touch a spirit. You can't, you can't uh, see a spirit. You can't put your hands on the spirit and feel them. It is a physical matter that Jesus is. He's, a, he's just as human as he was before he died up on the cross. But now he says, if that's not enough, hey, you got something to eat. So he comes to the second proof. You don't believe me now. You've touched me. You see me. You don't believe. You're in wonder. You're curious about what's going on. And can you imagine? Just put yourself in their shoes here. You've seen Jesus raise people from the dead. But just think about this. How in the world can someone that can raise people from the dead, if he is dead, how can there be life? But this is where Jesus is, has been telling them, but yet they did not understand this. And he says, I'm going to lay my life down, but I'm going to take it back up. So here he brings to them another, another evidence. And he says, do you have something to eat? And he proved to them in the form of eating. He talks about here, he says, and they gave him some fish and they gave him some honeycomb. And he says in verse 43 that he took it and he ate it before them. So there's some uh, there's the physical proof. They touched him. They saw him. But there's the proof of that he has the flesh and blood, that he was able to eat and digest food. Now, oftentimes, we don't even think about that part. But Jesus was giving them evidence. 
that he was able to eat and able to uh, uh, put this food in his body to, to chew it up. You can also think about as you go on a little bit in, in the book of John, John brings out that after the resurrection, we where most of us are familiar with the conversation that Jesus had with Peter, where he asked him three times, Peter, do you love me? But if you think about that conversation with Jesus and, and Peter, and he's saying, Peter, do you love me? If you go and you see, remember they were in the boat, and Jesus was there on the shore, and what was Jesus doing while he was on the shore? Jesus was there cooking breakfast for those guys who had been fishing all night. So we find that not only did Jesus... He, he ate for them, but you find on the shore he cooked for them and they were able to eat the food that he provided for them. So we find some proofs here. He's able to touch him. He ate the food in front of him. But here's the, the last proof that we have. Look there in verse 44. The last proof that we have in verse 44. He says, Jesus spoken to them and said, these, were, these are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the, in the uh, law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. See, Jesus has been teaching these guys. He's been teaching them, he's been teaching them, he's been teaching them, and yet it seems like the only people that heard that he was going to rise from the grave and paid attention to the fact that he was going to rise from the grave were the uh, Sanhedrin court, the Pharisees, the, and the, the chief high priest. They were the ones that sent the guards over there. They were the ones that went to Pilate to put the, high, the guards around the tomb. And they were the only ones looking, actually looking for Jesus to be right, risen from the grave while his disciples who he was teaching and he was preaching and he was sharing with them over and over again, especially those last few hours, he kept telling them, I'm going to be crucified. But not only did he tell them that he was going to be crucified, but he's going to be risen again, which is bringing us to our kind of our uh, um, theme that we've had for this month is the road to resurrection. All the things that Jesus was doing was on the way to being crucified and being resurrected from the grave. And so as we see in these verses, he brings out to them, this is what I've been telling you guys. This is what I've been saying to you all along. For these last three and a half years, I have been telling you that I'm going to go to the cross and that I'm going to be raised from the grave. You think about the conversation that Jesus had with Martha. Uh, there uh, as Lazarus had died and, and Jesus is about to rise or raise Lazarus from the grave and he tells her that Lazarus will live again and, and she says to Jesus, I know that in the resurrection that he will rise from the grave and Jesus tells her, woman, I am the resurrection. And so as we see in this point right here, these are things as he's teaching these guys. It's not some new revelation that Jesus brought out. Jesus uh, there were things that Jesus taught, there were things that Jesus revealed, but everything that Jesus said and everything that Jesus did was prophesied in times past. So as you see here, he says, I spoke this to you and it is, well, all the things that I did were to fulfill all the things that were written by Moses, by the prophets, and by the Psalms. You think about when Jesus... Um, is there on the cross. Even on the cross, he's quoting scriptures. As he says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? As you follow that along with the, I think it's Psalms 22, you can find Jesus bringing their attention to the psalm so that they would understand all the things that he was doing and all the things that were going on were prophecies. You see, when he cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And that was addressing that psalm because um, the, the way that we number it, you know, the, the Psalms 22, that's only just a few hundred years old. That's not a very old system. So in the, in the time of Christ, when he would have addressed Psalm 22, he would have said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? drawing the people to the scriptures so that they could see that all the things that Jesus was doing was according to the scriptures. And as he's talking to his disciples, he's giving them the physical proof. Touch me, hold me, see me. 
Give me something to eat. I'm proving to you that I am alive physically and in my own flesh, <laughs> in my own blood, in my own body. I am physically alive. I'm not just a myth. But not only do we find this, he brings out the scriptures have been pointing to this the whole time. When God uh, gave and moved Moses to write the scriptures, as he began writing there in Genesis and as he wrote those first five books of the Bible, as whoever it is that wrote the book of Job, when God moved whoever it is that wrote Job, all of these things were pointing towards this moment. This is the where we find where the Old Testament and the New Testament, they collide at the resurrection. And all the hope that the Old Testament, all the sacrifices and all the things of the Old Testament were pointing to the day when Jesus is going to rise from the grave. And it's so important for us to understand and know that Jesus is physically risen from the grave. He is, he is in his flesh today in heaven. The only people that are in their flesh in heaven is Jesus. And one of these days when the resurrection, uh, that final resurrection takes place, all the people that are in heaven, I don't know what they are in. I don't know how it's all working there. But I know that there's going to be a resurrection. They're going to be given a new body, a new flesh, and a new, uh, new body, a new flesh. And it's going to be like the one that Jesus has today. And that we see here in the scriptures that he was able to, he still had the scars to remind them and to show and to bring the evidence. And he was able to eat and he was able to do all these things. So why was it so important for them to get this? Why was it so important for them to see and have all the evidence that Jesus really, literally rose from the grave in his flesh? Because without that, these men were doubters. As you see, they were unbelieving. They did not believe yet. There they were looking at him, talking to him, having a conversation, and they still didn't believe. How do you think today as we deal with people, especially people that have never been to church, they've never been raised in, or heard about Christianity. What are we going to take to those people? When these guys right here, when they saw Jesus and they talked to Jesus, they were having a conversation with him, and yet they did not believe. But when they touched him, when they saw him eat, when they heard the teachings of all the things he was going to do, and, and they lined up perfectly with the Old Testament scriptures, these guys were changed from then on. Never did they back up ever again. Never did these guys quit. Never did these guys get to the point where uh, they ever walked away from Jesus again. After they saw Jesus, after they touched Jesus, after they uh, um, saw him eat, after they uh, better understood the scriptures, they became a different group of people. They became a group of people that saw and their hope was in the physical, literal resurrection of Jesus Christ. And they began to preach boldly, as we see later on of the day of Pentecost. They go out and they preach boldly the gospel of Jesus Christ, the resurrection, the physical, bodily, bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. And they never back down. And so for us today, and what Luke is trying to get across to Theophilus, is that there is a reason for you to have confidence in Jesus because these guys, they had their doubts. You can imagine that. You were talking to people that had their doubts. These people that were writing the scriptures, John as he was writing the gospels, as Matthew was writing the gospel, as Peter was writing the epistles, as all these guys were writing about Jesus, they had their doubts. But yet what we find, what, what Luke brings out is Jesus addressed their doubts. And these are the things that we address other people with. We address them with what Jesus did. 
We address them with the scriptures and how that Jesus lived up to the scriptures. We address them with all these things because it is God in his scriptures that will bring, as, as we read the scriptures, as we explain the scriptures, God comes with us and he uh, takes his Holy Spirit, he leads these people, and we give them the evidence. You see, today I don't believe in Jesus just because my mom and dad told me. I don't believe in Jesus just because I, I hope that one of these days when I leave this earth, I'm going to go to heaven. But I believe because there's proof. And, 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 and there's so many people, they'll, they'll try to discredit this proof. And they were trying to discredit them even as they were living on this earth. But one thing that you can say about these men is they, and not only the men, but the women as well, is they never back down. Once they saw and understood who Jesus was, once they touched him, they never changed their story. And all the things that they went through, the, ter the terrible deaths that they went through, the terrible persecution that they went through, they never back down. And Luke is trying to encourage and strengthen Theophilus' faith with the evidence of Jesus. And folks, I want you to know that we can be, take courage, we can take uh, comfort in knowing that Jesus is risen today. If you've never put your faith in Jesus, if you've had questions about Jesus and and, and, and all of this, maybe you've never heard the gospel. Then one of the wonderful things about this Facebook Live that I don't know who all has been, who's who's hearing this message. I, I don't know where you are. I don't know where you're from. But maybe this is the first time that you've ever heard about Jesus. And maybe you'd like to know more. Uh, my name is Kurt Neely. You can look me up on, on Langley Street or you can send a message to us on Langley Street's uh, messenger page there or Dustin uh, Raider or Logan Hargis. You can send one of us a message and we'll be glad to explain to you the evidence of Jesus, the proof of Jesus, that there's more to Jesus than just some kind of a storybook tale. But this is the proof. This is the evidence. You look at, at Matthew and you look at John those are guys who first handed, they had a first hand account of Jesus. You look at the, the book of Peter, he's a man who had a first hand experience with Jesus and the resurrection. And we want you to know and have confidence that Jesus is alive, that he is physically, literally alive today. And folks, our prayer for you is that you can take this. And you can be strong and bold and confident in Jesus Christ. And to share that, not only just so that you can have it personally, but the, so that you can share it with as many people that you come in contact with, that Jesus is alive. And no matter what we're going through today, Jesus is still alive, he's still in control, and we can put our faith in him. Thank you, everyone. We're going to have a word of prayer, and we'll be dismissed. Lord, we come to you at this time, Lord, and I pray that your word... And it will go out and, and it will accomplish what you send it out. And Lord, we know that because your word says it will. And it's proven. Your, your word has proven itself time and time again. And Lord, I have confidence in your word. Because it's been uh, tried. It's been tested. It's been put on trial. And, and Lord, your word has always proven itself. It stood up for itself. And Lord, I pray that it, whoever's listening to this um service lord that they can uh, put their faith in you lord that they will trust the evidence that you have in front of us here and lord that we will be bold with this evidence so that the whole world can know that you love them and that you paid for the their sin and that you are alive victorious over that sin lord we thank you for your many blessings in jesus name i pray amen Thank you.